what would we believe the Lord is saying to the church? <clears throat> Excuse my voice again uh, tonight. Uh, it hasn't let up, so we, we just trust in God. And so again, we we honor the, the leadership of uh, uh, Fountain of Hope International. We thank God for, for Apostle uh, uh, Precious and what uh, she's doing and with the, the team uh, there in Mildred. And so I want us to is to pray, uh, family, and, uh, and just trust God again uh, uh, for this evening. Oh, Father, we thank you again for this time and opportunity to, to minister your word uh, with your people and to share your heart uh, concerning these things which are of uh, great interest uh, to you that you, you have given us, Lord God, to, to execute in the earth. And we thank you that as we do share this with your people, we thank you for your, for your grace and the anointing to teach and that your people will, uh, will understand, will have a mind to understand uh, these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, bless you, family. In Haggai, uh, chapter 2, <clears throat> verse number 9. The Bible says, The glory of this latter house, this latter temple, shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, says the Lord of hosts. The, the, the texture and language of our prayer is changing, family. The language of our prayer is changing. <clears throat> there are prayers that the Father wants us to pray. There are prayers that the Lord wants us to pray. Prayers we have not prayed before. Uh, you, you can only ask for a pomegranate fruit. If you know what a pomegranate is. Uh, so we need the Holy Spirit to take us into the future and show us things uh, that are not yet here. When he begins to, to show us things which are not yet here, probably not, they're not even part of our church religious architecture. So you begin to pray things and that will shock yourself because the Lord is going to give us a perspective of what is over there while we're still here. Now, what we have gotten used to here in terms of church does not match what is what is over there and so the language begins to change and sometimes you're praying and people around you they look at you strange because the the language you are bringing them into a culture yet to be in and uh, so the texture of our prayer is changing is changing on the basis of re of revelation that's coming not only the the the, the, the texture of our prayer even the the messages that we are that are being released are not messages. That's why they call it revelation. Uh, it is the un, uh, moving away of the curtain so that we can see uh, what was a mystery before. Now the Lord is bringing it into the open. So we we need the Holy Spirit. Uh, there are levels in God that we will never reach <clears throat> without the aid of the Holy Spirit. And so. Uh, as we were ministering yesterday, the, the, the church as we have always known it, and because of time, there shall be an acceleration. This is why they, there's, there's a lot of people who are going to fall away. Um, there's a, people who have, you have probably elevated to the status of celebrity preacher. I don't know what concept that is. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that you know that, that, that it's going to happen because the Lord needs to do a cleansing for for Him to release us uh, into the earth like He's never done before. Uh, he has to know that we're going to represent Him well over there and not to misrepresent Him. So all the judgment and stuff that's coming it's necessary for His own integrity in Jesus' name. <clears throat> so we need the Holy Spirit. I'm saying to us, family. Uh, we need the Holy Spirit because it is through the Holy Spirit that we get a revelation of the things which are in the heart of God so that we can declare them in the present. 
we can declare them in the present. You can never ask for something that you are not aware of. There are things, there are prayers that remain unprayed. This is why we need uh, the people to arise uh, who will invest in prayer, in speaking in other tongues, and then declare these things in the present because that's where the Lord is uh, taking us into. The upper room, therefore, uh, is also a place where we get a glimpse of the future. In the upper room, we get a glimpse of the future so that we can declare it today. We get a glimpse of the future. It's people whom the Lord uh, brings into a place where the environment there allows for mysteries and, uh, and all the hidden things to be, to be unsealed in Jesus' name. So um, I'm sharing with us Barcelona, things that we ought to contend for, uh, things that we ought to contend for going forward. So briefly, <clears throat> I want to share with you about uh, the pedigree of people through whom God is going to execute judgment against principalities and powers. You remember yesterday, I spoke about the fact that the Lord has always wanted people who will be able to push back against spirits and that people will have authority over spirits. So I want to share with you about the pedigree of people through whom God is going to execute judgment against principalities and powers. They are called the End Times Church. Yesterday I did uh, speak about the End Times Church to a degree, uh, but I just want to uh, take us into a, a, another uh, aspect of that message uh, this evening. Now, because of the, of the gravity and weight of the calling of the End Times Church, because of what uh, we represent because of, of our uh, mandate, because of our assignment, because of our ordination uh, in Jesus' name, in our generation. Uh, there are going to be things that the Lord is going to require. Now, because of where the Lord is taking us to, uh, the Lord, the Holy Spirit is putting much emphasis on the question of prayer. As time progresses, Basil one, there will be required, we will be required, you will be required to spend more and more time in the king's quarters. That's what the Lord is, uh, is doing. So the task ahead uh, as we as we as we gen with God uh, requires that there must be certain installations made in the church the church there must be there must be supernatural instruments installed in us the church must receive upgrades in the spirit so that we are up to the task you say what task uh, up on the father's agenda Barcelona, is the harvest of nations when you look at what the Lord is wanting to do, well, there will always be revelation, there will always be things that we get excited about, but I want you to understand that up on the Lord's agenda is the harvest of souls, a great harvest of souls. It is not as, uh, as simple as it may seem, uh, family. Uh, I'm gonna explain that to you in the next couple of moments. Uh, the harvest of souls is not as simple as you may seem. Uh, because the world as it stands, as it is, it is owned elsewhere. The world is owned by someone. <clears throat> In Ephesians uh, 6 verse 12, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of uh, darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. One of the areas of great contestation in the spirit is the area of souls. <clears throat> in actual fact, 
uh, it is the area of contestation because uh, the economy of the devil hinges upon the presence of wicked people in the earth. It revolves mainly around people. So the enemy puts instruments in people so that they can begin to execute his will in the earth. He uses them, he uses unbelief. I'm, I'm trying to explain why the end time harvest, it's not just something you prophesy about and you do not invest in it becoming a reality. The, the realm of souls is contested territory. The kingdom of darkness needs humanity for their economy to stand. The kingdom of light needs people for the will of God to find expression in the earth. So it's not a question of just going in the street, which is what, what, what I did last week. But understand what is at stake. Understand that there is a greater investment in the spirit. By the time we step out into the street, we must have invested in the spirit because the contestation at that level is, 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 is um, it, you won't believe. Now, what we're saying, Barcelona, Uti, the enemy, the reason why uh, soul winning, you have to look it in a different light, look at it in a different light is because the enemy has an economy and he uses unbelievers and he puts instruments in them so that through them he can reconfigure the planet which is what he has done for thousands of years so he can reconfigure the planet as he chooses so if 100 people get saved for instance in the city of Devon, 100 people get saved so the city is potentially 100 thieves less now understand what that means if 100 people get saved because there's a vibrant church in the city the city is now 100 potential abusers less and that hurts the economy of the devil and he does not want it he does not like it remember over the centuries the enemy has built an infrastructure of wickedness in the earth he has built an infrastructure of wickedness in different societies in different nations in different locations and everywhere in people through that infrastructure he services um, lots of of people who want his services remember when the when the enemy invited jesus to the mountain he says i will give you everything if you bow down and worship me that has been a standing principle from that time onwards there are people who say oh, we want our heaven now and so we will sell our soul the principle is that if you want if you want uh, glit and glamour uh, bow to the throne and i will sponsor you it's called sponsored wealth it's called sponsored power and so there are people who who need his services but besides that we are saying through the infrastructure that the enemy has created he has built in people this is why spirits are very important to him that no one is able to contest them and this is why he decree he, 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 <clears throat> he ensures i wanted to use the word uh, when he is not crediting us he decredits us uh, through sin but i'm gonna get to that what we're talking about here family is that his he, he he his services has been able to reach millions of people uh, millions of people across the globe millions of people across the planet uh, people within his economy through the infrastructure his infrastructure in people his services has been able to go everywhere now flow with me because when you're dealing with great harvest of souls that's what we are dealing with in jesus name so 
you and I are then brought into the scene because we have received Jesus. We are brought into the scene to be custodians of the Father's will, to be custodians of his will, to be custodians of his interests. But remember, the Bible says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against people who go on vacation. To start with, we do not wrestle against people to start with. The spirits don't go on holiday, they don't go on vacation, they don't eat, they don't drink. They are preoccupation is to do their master's bidding. So the Bible says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. The church, Barcelona, has the responsibility of plundering the houses of princes. That is not a light thing. If anything, this message should drive you to a place of prayer, into your upper room, because sometimes, oftentimes, we treat these things as very light. When you're talking about a great harvest of souls, we are excited because it's been prophesied, but what does it take for it to get to be, to be done, to be executed? So we are saying the church has the responsibility of plundering the houses of princes. Remember, we're dealing with princes. They're called principalities. They are not lightweights. They're princes. They rule over nations. They rule over presidents. Now, I'm saying all that to say that remember that you are dealing with arrogant beings. Arrogant, proud, very proud entities. They will not yield they will not sh uh, shift. They will not surrender their territory to someone just because they scream so. They will not yield a territory just because you decreed and you declared. That's not how it works. This is where I want to focus on Barcelona because I want you to be sober with regards to the task at hand so that we can be able to get the results. The Lord has invested. He needs to get return on investment. That is my prayer. That Father, as long as I am here, let your name be glorified. I was brought here. I have no reason to be here, to be alive, to be, to be here. I was created to bring glory to your name. I was, I was brought here for your will to find expression through my existence. And so I wanted to understand that the assignment that we have requires something from us more than what we probably have fought over the years. So the enemy has coexisted with the church for the last 2000 years. I, I think I said that to you uh, yesterday, the enemy has coexisted with the church for the last 2,000 years. And uh, we have shared territory. We shared territory. The enemy has been louder. The enemy has been weightier. The enemy has had an upper hand, powerful. Hence, achieving more. So you go to any city, you go to any region, you, you, will, you will find that there is more evidence of the enemy being present there than uh, the evidence of a uh, church being there except for the building. Uh, the enemy, his presence is not proven by buildings. His presence is proven by culture, what people do, a way of life. And so the enemy has been, has been, has been there causing much devastation and my heart family I am so I am so upset and I'm trusting God oh Barcelona, may God give us the grace and the anointing capacity to cause as much devastation in his camp for the glory of God in Jesus name amen and so, 
why has the enemy been louder? Why has the enemy uh, not seemed to have had an upper hand? Why he has had an upper hand? Um, because our struggle as the church, as the body of Christ, has that of a pedigree. So I want to explain that to you uh, for a few moments in the minutes that I have here. Our struggle has been that of pedigree. Now, pedigree, uh, in this sense, is about two things. One, it's credentials, credentials, credentials. Number two is legitimacy, legitimacy. So it's credentials and legitimacy. In any region where the pedigree of the church is such that these two things are in question, in that region, the church shall be weak. So pedigree asks this question, what makes you think you will plunder 1,000 souls from Satan into God's kingdom? It's one of the questions that a pedigree will ask. What makes you, wherever you are, wherever your church is, think that you will plunder 1,000 souls. We trust in God for, for thousands of souls, tens of thousands, millions of souls, if I can refrain with you. But what does it take to, to, to do that? What do we need to do for us to be able to go to the, the house of a strong man, break his door open, and release the captives? It is, is it that easy? It's just something that we sing about and we're just excited about. Or there is, a, there is more than meets the eye. And so, what, what makes you think principalities will allow demons in people? What makes us think, family? Sometimes we, you know, there's charismatic fantasy. Sometimes we, we fantasize about these things and we think that this is, it's just like thing. And this is why they don't get done because we, we take things very casually. Casually, we forget that we are dealing with princes, strategists, spirits who are very legal, who they are very legalistic. They follow law. They, they screen you and see if you, if you, if you can do what you, what, what you are screaming about. If, if your weight on the scales of things, it is, it is heavy enough for you to be able to outweigh them. Remember the word glory means weight. But that's another thing. So, I'm saying, what makes you think principalities will allow demons in people to be cast out? Just because you said so. Basil one, we, we cannot say because we are Christian, because we pray in Jesus' name, even we pray hours on end that because of that only, that means the enemy is going to yield ground and give us territory. Uh, remember the sons of Sceva. The sons of Sceva in the book of Acts, um, they struggled with the issue of pedigree. The sons of Sceva struggled in the book of Acts with the issue of pedigree. Father, as I minister this word, I pray in Jesus' name that you impact your people. Lord, I'm in Christoris in Jesus' name. The sons of Sceva, never forget the sons of Sceva. The, the sons of Sceva will become important uh, as we begin to discuss these things going forward as a case study for the church. Um, when we look at that particular passage of scripture, it is clear, it is apparent that demons scanned them. Uh, Spirit scanned them and found them to be illegitimate. Spirit scanned them from a head to toe and found them to be illegitimate, to be underweight. In boxing, you cannot go and fight a heavyweight as a bantamweight, as a featherweight. So this is what happened here. 
we go to these wonderful meetings, prayer meetings, six to six. And then we think on the basis of that, we then can begin to challenge an infrastructure that has existed before you were born. It is a standing infrastructure in the city. It requires more. Uh, this particular scripture, uh, Acts chapter 19, verses 13 to 16, it says, Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of the, of the Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. And it says, seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, this evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know and Paul I know about. But who are you? Who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. The spirits say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Why did they strip them naked, Vasilvan? Why did those spirits uh, strip those men naked? The sons of Sceva, seven of them in total. They stripped them naked because they were unclothed spiritually. That's how they looked in the realm of the spirit. Unclothed. Unclothed. Sometimes zeal gave us a perception of ourselves. We overestimate because we hyped up. We pumped, we have seen Paul doing this, we've seen this one doing this, and we are kind of hyped up. Yet we do not do due diligence in self-assessing that to see that have I put on enough weight to be able to push these things back in Jesus' name. So they were unclothed. They had no robes on. Spirits saw them for who they were in the spirit. I don't know what they had on, but they stripped them naked so that in the natural, they reflect who they are in the spirit. Uh, we call this, Vazalwane, testimony of spirits. When spirits say, Jesus, I know. All I know. We call it a testimony of spirits. Now I'm going to come back to it just before I close because that is what will characterize the end times church. Robes are significant, family. Robes in the realm of the spirit uh, are very important. The spirits, the demonic spirits, they look at your robe. The fallen angels, according to their hierarchy, they look at your robe. <clears throat> a police officer has little chance of stopping traffic if he or she is in her private regalia. There is little chance, no chance at all in certain instances. We stop because of the uniform. We stop because of the badge. We don't care if you're muscular. We don't care if your face is threatening. We don't care. You have got no authority to go on a public national road and stop traffic. Uh, we don't care who you are. You could be a multimillionaire, jump out of your Maserati and just go, just decide to stop. We don't gonna stop. You don't carry weight. We, we, don't, we, don't, we, we don't have to. Uh, we are not obliged. Or whatever you do, we, we can't we can't stop. What makes a storm 
is because of what you are wearing. You could be jumping out of a, of a whatever car, I don't want to mention whatever car, but whatever car that is not very expensive. And um, you will uh, bring the entire traffic to a halt because of what you're wearing. There's a lot of traffic in the spirit, family. There's a lot of traffic in the spirit pouring into regions, pouring into our communities, pouring into societies, pouring into townships. It shall not stop. Oh, It shall not stop until we put on the robe of holiness, the robe of purity. Never think that when we hear the message of uh, repentance, message of holiness and purity is it's just it's just because it's a, you know it's a once of trending thing no it is what the lord is wanting us to do because there is a reason for that there is a reason that we are attired properly so that we can be able to execute and enforce authority according to the will of the lord in jesus name so as the Lord, as I as I draw to a close, the end times church, the end times church will have one, a good testimony among men, because the Bible says, "So let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven," and, and all that. We have a good testimony among men. As a, as a husband, I have a good testimony among men. As a father, I have a good testimony among men. As a neighbor, as a, as a, as a person who lives uh, in, in that community, I have a good testimony among men. As a church leader, I have a good testimony among men that is, that is, a, that is well and good in Jesus' name. But secondly, and more importantly, in the times we are in and where we are going. We, will, we must have, End Times Church, will have a good testimony among spirits. A good testimony among spirits. One of the main functions of sin is to disqualify us, to disqualify us, to render us illegitimate, and irrelevant before God. Uh, so the Lord says, come out from amongst them and be separate. Because when you sin, remember, Bazalwan, I don't want to track this too long, but we are dealing with uh, the, the ruler of, of, of fallen angels and demonic spirits. He was once called Lucifer. I want you to understand. Let's just get this. He was once called Lucifer. And according to the Bible, he was the standard, the measurement of perfection in heaven. So when you're dealing with, uh, with, with, with Satan, we are dealing with somebody who understands what perfect is. Uh, SABS, you know, people who do uh, in companies who quality assure a product that it's good for, for consumption, for circulation. He was a stamp of perfection. And so when he falls, the entire kingdom knows what perfect is. And so if you're going to go and challenge them, and then you have something in your life that they know renders you illegitimate, trust me, you will pray as long as you want. But if you're scared, and there's that thing in the in the court of heaven you will not be allowed because according to the rules of the spirit the laws of the spirit spiritual jurisprudence you cannot shift anything it is not allowed it's it's according to the rules of engagement i don't want to get into that vein Bazelwan. but one of the main functions of sin it is because it disqualifies us See, always remember and understand when, when a church does not uh, uh, teach on sin, not just lambasting people for the sake of it, but you must understand sin is a technology. 
a technology created by the enemy to discredit you. It's a technology. Sin is a technology of the spirit invented by an archangel to render humanity illegitimate, that you will never be able to shift and move anything that God wants you to shift. So the Lord says, come out from amongst them because there are things I want shifted. There are things I want spoken over regions, but your voice carries no weight if you are not walking in purity. And the spirits will scan you just like they did, the sons of Sceva, and they found them wanting. And so, Basilwane, I pray in Jesus' name that you understand that it is a pedigree that the Lord wants us to, to, to adopt and want us to arrive at credentials, legitimacy in the spirit. Are you legitimate that decrees that we are making? Our posture in God, because everything we are going to do in the earth, everything we are going to <clears throat> execute in the earth, we must be standing on the heel holiness we come from a place of weakness and humility in God knowing that we do all that we do by grace our prayers and our fasting will not do it we come from a place of brokenness remember when you come from a place of brokenness that alone does something because you are dealing with a kingdom whose chief is a proud being and pride has infested his entire kingdom. Uh, when you come in humility, when you come, when you come in brokenness, it's a breach on the system. And so, family, understand that the Lord is calling us into a place of purity. So, as you go into into uh, your upper room, you go into your let the let let the place of prayer not just change things. Let the place of prayer change me and father you grant me the grace the things i'm struggling with the things i have I've found very hard to to disconnect from my pray lord god and then you begin to repent father forgive me of every sin in jesus name and grant me the grace to work with you then you pray for power you pray for authority you pray for power over spirits in jesus name we bless you, Basilwane, in the name of Jesus. Now we pray that the, the hand of the Lord may continue to be upon Fortress of Hope International and uh, His will be, be fulfilled in the ministry. His will find expression and be great victory. And so we pray that even as the conference continues, May the hand of the Lord as the, the men and women of God continue uh, to speak a revelation to you. There may be great impartation in your lives. In Jesus' name, and the Lord be glorified. And the church says,